Each year, more than 70 million tons of aluminum are produced, enough to wrap around the Earth three times if we turned it into a chain. It's in your phone, in airplanes, in your kitchen. It's everywhere. But how does a reddish rock from the ground get transformed into a metal so useful and present in our daily lives? Today, we dive into one of the world's most powerful industries to follow the journey of aluminum, from the Earth to becoming a pillar of the modern world. Ready? Let's discover how it's made and how it works. But first, let's travel back in time. Did you know that aluminum was once more valuable than gold? That's right. Just two centuries ago, in the France of Napoleon III, the most distinguished guests at royal banquets used aluminum cutlery, while others had to settle for gold or silver utensils. Why? Because extracting this metal from rocks was an almost impossible challenge, a scientific dream that seemed out of reach. In 1808, British chemist Sir Humphrey Davy identified aluminum as an element while experimenting with a compound called alum, which had been used for centuries to dye fabrics and tan leather. But isolating it in its pure form was like trying to catch lightning. It wasn't until 1825 that Danish chemist Hans Christian Ørsted managed to produce a small sample of aluminum. But the process was so complex and expensive that the metal remained a luxury reserved for the elite something only the wealthiest could afford. Everything changed in 1886 when two young geniuses, Frenchman Paul Heroux and American Charles Martin Hall, both in their 20s, discovered almost simultaneously a revolutionary process that bears their names, the hall Eru process. This method uses electricity to free aluminum from its chemical prison in minerals, an innovation that turned a rare metal into a cornerstone of modern industry. Suddenly, aluminum went from being a treasure fit for kings to being everywhere. In the first airplanes that conquered the skies, in the skyscrapers that define our cities, and even in the soda can you open on a hot day. But how do we go from a rock buried deep in the earth to this shiny metal we use every day? Let's find out. Our story begins in the heart of the earth, in places like the Huntley Mine in Western Australia, the largest bauxite mine in the world. Here. Beneath a layer of hard rock that can be up to six meters thick lies bauxite, a reddish mineral that is the raw material for aluminum. But reaching this treasure is no easy task. Every day, controlled explosions, powerful enough to demolish a 10-story building, loosen around 100,000 tons of ore, and in just one month, this mine consumes up to 1,000 tons of ammonium nitrate-based explosives, enough to shake an entire city. These blasts not only clear the land, but also mark the beginning of a process that will transform a rough rock into one of the most versatile metals on the planet. Once the explosions have done their job, the most impressive machinery you can imagine takes the stage. This is the largest mechanical shovel in the world, a beast of engineering worth $25 million that can scoop up a ton of bauxite in just seconds. The trucks that transport this mineral are just as colossal. Each one can carry up to 300 tons, the equivalent of a small commercial airplane. In less than a minute, the shovel loads one of these giants, which roars off toward the processing plant. But here's a fact that will surprise you. From every ton of bauxite, only a small fraction of pure aluminum is extracted. It takes about four tons of rock to produce just one ton of metal. This process requires not only brute force, but also incredible precision, because any mistake at this stage could compromise the entire batch. And this is just the beginning. This reddish rock, which seems more fit for a desert trail than for building an airplane or a skyscraper, is about to become the metal that shapes our world. The bauxite arrives at the refining plant, where its first major transformation begins. Imagine giant rotating drums the size of a house, filled with steel balls as big as melons. These drums crush the bauxite into a fine powder, so fine you could mistake it for flour. This powder is mixed with a caustic soda solution at extremely high temperatures, dissolving the aluminum oxide and leaving behind impurities like iron, titanium, and silica. But here comes the first critical moment. This process is so delicate that a single error in temperature, pressure, or chemical composition could ruin tons of material. Operators monitor each step with almost surgical precision, using sensors and computers to make sure everything is perfectly calibrated. The resulting solution is filtered and cooled, forming white crystals that look like fine sand. This is alumina, the essential ingredient for aluminum. 
This is the process that transforms a rough rock into the foundation of a metal that will change the world. The alumina doesn't stay at the mine. It's transported on massive ships that can carry thousands of tons, crossing oceans to reach specialized smelters. At the port, an industrial vacuum capable of moving 300 tons per hour empties the ship in just five hours, a display of efficiency straight out of a science fiction movie. But not everything here is a fairy tale. Any delay in this supply chain can drive up the cost of the final product. And in an industry where profit margins are tight, time is literally money. The alumina arrives at the smelter ready for the most challenging step of all, electrolysis, where aluminum finally takes shape. This is where the real magic happens, but also where everything can collapse in an instant. The alumina is mixed with molten cryolite, a rare mineral found in places like Greenland, which lowers the melting point of alumina from 2050 degrees Celsius to around 950 degrees Celsius, making the process more efficient. Then, a massive electric current, enough to power 300,000 homes for a year, passes through the mixture in electrolytic cells, or POTS. This current separates the oxygen atoms from the aluminum, leaving the pure metal at the bottom of the cell while the oxygen reacts with the carbon anodes, producing carbon dioxide. But a single error in the electric current, even one milliwatt off, can ruin the entire batch, costing millions of dollars. Workers monitor each cell with almost obsessive precision, using advanced technology to track temperature, composition, and current in real time. And here's a detail that will surprise you. The carbon anodes, which conduct the electricity, are consumed during the process, disintegrating like charcoal in a bonfire. Every few weeks, they must be replaced, and producing these anodes is an entire industry in itself, using materials like petroleum coke and coal tar pitch, the same ones used to make asphalt or steel. If the quality of an anode isn't perfect, the entire smelting operation could come to a halt. It's a delicate dance between science, technology, and human decisions, where there's no room for error. And there's more. The electrolysis process consumes so much energy that aluminum is often called solid electricity. A full one-third of the cost of each kilo of aluminum comes from the electricity used to create it. The molten aluminum, at around 950 degrees Celsius, is extracted every 36 hours using a suction system so precise it feels like alien technology. This liquid metal, which glows like melted silver, is transferred to refining furnaces where it's further purified to remove any trace of impurities like hydrogen or non-metallic particles. This is where a technique called fluxing comes into play, where gases are bubbled through the metal to lift impurities to the surface, almost like cleaning the metal with a magic wand. It's such a meticulous process that even a single miscalculated gas bubble could affect the quality of the aluminum. Once purified, the metal is ready to take shape, and the result is a material so pure it shines like a mirror, ready to become something extraordinary. The molten aluminum is carefully poured into molds to form ingots, bars, or sheets, depending on its final destination. What began as a reddish rock, extracted through controlled explosions in a mine, has gone through a long, technical, and demanding process that turned it into a pure, malleable, and resistant metal. It's now ready to shape the structures that move the world, from the wings of an airplane that crosses oceans, to the body of an electric car redefining urban mobility, to the casing of your phone, or the frames that support modern buildings. But its story doesn't end here, because the true value of aluminum lies not only in its lightness or strength, but in its ability to be transformed again and again. Unlike other materials, aluminum can be recycled indefinitely without losing its properties. And the most surprising part, recycling it uses only 5% of the energy needed to produce it from raw ore. This detail completely changes the perspective. A soda can, for example, can be back in circulation as a new can in just 60 days. And that same material, if properly recovered, can later become a bicycle, a street lamp, or even part of a satellite. The energy efficiency of aluminum recycling is so high that today, it's estimated that over 75% of the aluminum produced since the late 19th century is still in use. Thanks to its ability to be recycled without losing quality, aluminum has become a pillar of sustainability. Its recycling not only saves resources and energy, but also creates jobs and reduces emissions. By throwing a can into the right bin, you become part of an efficient and planet-friendly cycle. And that's how aluminum is made and how it works. 
What did you think of the process? I'd love to read your opinion in the comments. If you learned something new, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you won't miss upcoming stories about how the objects we use every day are made and how they work. See you in the next video.